the catapult has so much power, it overcomes the T-bar, it breaks, the aircraft gets launched, it goes out, it does its mission, it comes back and lands, they park the aircraft, they shut it down, and the maintenance crew will go in between the nose wheel tires and they will release and remove this half of the T-bar. The catapult crew, once the catapult has been fired, will come in and pick up the hole back and they then will release this half of the T-bar and put a brand new one back in for the next catapult shot. This one happens to be blue, almost. It's almost worn off. Blue ones were for A7s. That's what this airplane is. I flew the Hawkeye and had a white one. Each aircraft goes off at a different weight and a different airspeed. The T-bars are designed at different tensile strengths to break. The catapult crew know what airplane by the color code that it was going to be designed to launch. Okay, now, when this aircraft the nose launch bar goes in here. They apply hydraulic pressure on the back side of the uh, shuttle to push it forward so that the shuttle and the nose launch bar are tight. That's the reason that we have the hold back, the T-bar. Why do we need it? The reason we need it is this. If I were to launch this airplane with the nose launch bar loose, and you can see that it's loose right now, if I were to fire the catapult like it is right now, that catapult has so much power in that short of distance that it will hit that nose launch bar so hard it'll either flip it up out of the way or it will break it. Guaranteed. The Navy said that's not a good idea. Come up with a system whereby we can launch the airplane safely. And that's the reason why we came up with the system of the T-bar. What we do is we apply hydraulic pressure to the back side of the uh, shuttle, we push it forward until the uh, shuttle can't go any farther forward because this end of the hole back is stuck into the flight deck. It won't allow it to move. This end of it is connected uh, uh, onto the uh, the hole back is connected into the flight deck. The hole back is connected onto the aircraft so that when we apply hydraulic pressure to the shuttle, it pushes the airplane forward until it can't go any farther forward, which in turn pushes the nose launch bar tight into the shuttle. So now when we fire the catapult, uh, it takes the shuttle, the spears, the aircraft, all the way down to the end without breaking anything. Okay? You know we are going to have a, an exam on this, right? <laughs> okay, now. As the airplane is being taxied forward, we have maintenance guys in and around the airplane and they're checking it all over to make sure that it's ready to go fly. And they're checking all these doors and hatches, and there's quite a few of them, that the tires are inflated correctly, there's no hydraulic leaks, uh, fuel leaks, that the bombs or rockets are on correctly, the control surfaces are working, and in essence, that the airplane's ready to go flying, they'll come running out and give the catapult officer a thumbs up indicating that it's ready to go. At the same time, once that goes into tension, the catapult crew will come running out and they'll give the catapult uh, crew, a, the catapult officer, a thumbs up indicating that the catapult is connected correctly to the aircraft. Okay, now at this time, the plane director who's been directing the airplane onto the catapult will now turn control over to the catapult officer and the catapult officer will take control of the aircraft and the pilot with this signal. This is called the two finger turn. That signal is for the pilot to go to full power and test his instruments uh, and his engine to make sure it's ready to go. Up until now, he has not had that opportunity. He's been looking outside, he's been busy, he hasn't checked his engine instruments at all. Now he has that opportunity. In fact, he's got a place for his helmet to be in a rested spot back there because if he doesn't, it'll be back there real soon anyway. So he's checking his instruments and everything with his head in the, in the uh, 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 headrest area. Now let's assume that he sees a red light or a temperature or pressure is incorrect or in an area that he doesn't like and he wants to suspend this whole evolution and how do we do that? There's two ways for the pilot to do that. The first way, we don't want to make it too hard for the pilots, right? So the first way is for that pilot to shake his head no. 
and if that's too hard, we have a backup system as well. And the backup system is for that pilot to say suspend, suspend, suspend over the air because he's on the same takeoff frequency as the air boss is. And if you haven't had the opportunity to go through the island structure, how do you recommend doing that after my talk? Uh, anyway, the air boss's job, one of them is to listen to the radio during the catapult shots for those words, suspend, suspend, suspend. So he has the ability by throwing a switch up in flight deck control, our, our primary flight control, to suspend either the port catapult or the starboard catapult from up there. Why do we need a backup system? What's this all about? The reason is this. The pilot and the catapult officer are some distance apart. And although the pilot is supposed to shake his head like this, I have had the pilot shake their head like this. Nope, I don't want to go. Suspend, 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 no problem. All right, the backup. Okay, this is the signal to suspend the catapults and is followed immediately with a shuttle aft. Remember, we have hydraulic pressure on the back side of that shuttle, pushing it forward so it's tight into the nose launch bar. Now we release the hydraulic pressure and the shuttle comes back to the position that you now see it. The nose launch bar is spring-loaded and it will come up to the stowed position. We've removed that spring because it comes up really fast and it's a really strong spring. We don't want anybody to get hurt. So we've released and removed the spring. But the nose launch the, uh, bar in the stowed position is like on the E2. Can you see the white bar in front of the uh, airplane with the, uh, the radio over? Uh, anyway, it's in the stowed position. And that's how we taxi around on the flight deck within the stowed position until it gets up here. Everyone on the flight deck can now see that that aircraft is no longer connected to the catapult and it's safe. But there's one person who can't and doesn't know that it's safe and who do you think that is? The pilot. The only guy in the world that needs to know he's no longer connected to the catapult and he does know he can't see it. How do we let him know that it's now safe to bring the power back? Remember, he's at full power. And when he's at full power, the pilot can't hear a word over the air. He can't hear anything. I'm a pilot and I use that excuse at home a lot. Right? What'd you say? Huh? Can't hear a thing, thank you. Can't hear a thing. So how do we let him know that he's now safe and to bring the power back? Well, I was the catapult officer. I had control of the pilot and the aircraft. So what I had to do was to walk out in front of the aircraft and give him the throttle back signal. And that's this signal right here. Remember, I have to be quite a ways up. The pilot is going to stay at full power because his life depends on it. If he gets fired and he's not at full power, he's going into water. His life depends on him staying and being at full power. Unless some dumb idiot walks out in front of his airplane and gives him the throttle back sign, and I guess it must be safe enough for him to do that, and that's what he does. I got paid extra for that. <laughs> okay, let's assume now that this guy's ready to go. He's had his year and a half of flight training. He got his, earned his wings. He's been checked out in his brand new aircraft, this A7. Uh, he's had his Wheaties for breakfast. He likes what he's doing. He's at full power, and he's going to make the world safe for democracy. How do we launch the airplane and what are the signals? We're supposed to see a nice exaggerated salute. This is what I'm looking for. But I never saw that. Hardly ever saw a nice salute like that that was obvious for everyone on the flight deck to know and realize that that guy's ready to go. What I normally saw was one of these.